So that's prefixes. Let's move our over here now and look at some suffixes. So for our suffixes, I put the suffixes over here because they go at the end of the word. So I put them at the end of the page. And then I put what the suffixes mean here. And then I'm going to fill in some root words to make some words with suffixes over on this side. So I'll put my prefix marker away for a second. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first suffix that I chose for you. Once again, this is something where there are a lot of suffixes out there in the world. I didn't put all of them on here. I just chose some that you're going to see most often. Um, but there are tons of other suff suffixes that might be added to the ends of words. So the first one I picked was full. This one's pretty easy to understand. If you have full at the end, it means you're full of whatever that is, okay? So let's say maybe I am thankful. So I'm full of thanks. At Thanksgiving time, I am thankful. I'm full of thanks. How about less? We could put that at the end of the word and it means without. So it's kind of like full and less are opposites here. Those are like antonyms. So if I am going to have a word that has less at the end, oh, what if I use that same root word and put it with less? Think less. Oh, so now instead of being full of thanks, I don't have any thanks. I'm without thanks, none at all. So maybe mom might be feeling thankless thanks thankless after she spent a lot of time working in the kitchen for that thanksgiving dinner and nobody said thanks mom it was great all right let's move here now these are two suffixes that actually we've got a few here three in a row that a lot of people don't think of as suffixes but they are because we're adding them to the end of a root word the first one i have here is er so when you add the er to the end of the word a lot of times you're making it so that you're going to say you're more of whatever that thing is. Okay. So let's say um, my dog Shane is bigger than my dog Bella. Okay. So my root word is big. But if I just wrote big here, B-I-G, and then went to E-R, this would tell me that having only one consonant here would make this a long I. It would be biger. That's definitely not the word I'm trying to spell. So I actually have to put two G's here for bigger. So it's more big. I know that sounds weird. We're supposed to say bigger, right? So I want you to take notice, though, that you might have to do a little manipulating of the root word when you're putting suffixes on because we want to keep the pronunciation of the word correct. So I had to put those two G's there. And you're going to see that there might be some other changes that we need to make in other suffixes as well. All right. Now, how about if we want, you know, a dog that is the absolute massive out of the whole world. world. Try not to say the word already. But I could put EST at the end to show it is the most big. It is the biggest, right? So once again, I've got that E right here. And if I just put my root word as big with one G, I would say biggest. That's not going to work. I need to put two G's there so that I'm pronouncing this as a short I, biggest. So why one dog is bigger than another dog. I'm comparing two dogs. But if I want to compare more than two and say like, my dog is the biggest dog in the whole world, then I'm going to use that E-S-T suffix. Okay. How about this one? When you add E-D at the end of the word, a lot of words, verbs, we can use this to show that they happened in the past. All right. So today I talk, but yesterday I talked. Right. So I'll put my root word, talk, in front of that ED. So talked, it already happened. It happened in the past. Okay, how about this one right here, L-Y. I can put that as a suffix to show that how something is. So for this one, it might be like um, if I can run very quick, 
you might say that I run quickly. All right, so my root word is quick. That means that how, how I am is, how I'm running is quick. I'm running in a way that is quick. So quickly. All right. Ooh, how about this? We have two here that are very similar. And sometimes these trip people up in spelling because they don't know if it's I-B-L-E or A-B-L-E. So you have to be careful with these. But both of them mean something is or can be this way. Okay. So let's think about the I-B-L-E suffix. Sorry, I have my computer here with some notes and it just went on to uh, the screensaver, so I had to wake it back up again. All right, so I-B-L-E, what's a pre, or excuse me, a root word that I could put with that suffix? Some of you gymnasts know this word. Ah, what's that one? Flexible, flexible. So if you're flexible, you can flex. If you're flexible, you can flex. I am not very flexible. I cannot flex into the splits right now. All right, but if you are flexible, then you can flex. All right, same thing here if we have a bull. So, all right guys, you're probably gonna see a quick cut in the video right here because I had to go back and make a change to something and I didn't wanna do the whole video over again. So I'm just doing this in part over again. So please forgive me on that one. So we're going to jump in with a bowl where we were when we left off on the last video. So this is another suffix that can mean is or can be. So for a bowl, let's put in, oh, this one's going to be a little bit tricky. Watch this. Huh. Believable. Now, you're probably going to say, hey, Miss Rotundi, that's not how you spell believe, because that's my root word on this one. But in order for us to be able to pronounce this word correctly, I needed to drop that silent E before I add the suffix at the end. So a change, just like we did with bigger and biggest, we had to change a little something to make this fit when we add the suffix to the end. So believable, it's we're able to believe it. It can be believed. Let's go to our next one. This one, we're going to be adding S at the end. So you might not have thought of that as a suffix, but yeah, just adding S to the end is adding a suffix and it's showing that there's more than one, or we also call that showing that it's plural. More than one is plural. So why don't we do add the root word shirt. So now we have shirts. Like Mrs. Rotundi has tons of t-shirts in her drawer. All right. Now I also have more than one could be ES. We could add that suffix ES. Sometimes just adding the S at the end doesn't sound right. You need to have that ES to make the word sound correct. So like if I was going to go to the park and I'm looking around at all the benches, I don't say bench. That's hard to even say if you're just saying the S at the end. So instead we put the ES for words that end with things like CH, like bench does. There we go. So I'm making the word bench plural, saying there's more than one of them, but I need to add the ES because of the spelling there. So you'll notice some words the ending is going to cause you to use an ES instead of an S. I won't go into all the rules about adding that ES right here, though. All right, the last thing we're going to look at quickly is we are going to look at some words and we are going to identify the root word, the prefix, and the suffix. Look at these, guys. These are some pretty big looking words, but we can easily take them apart into parts that we understand and we can figure out what they mean. So, each one has a prefix, a root word, and a suffix. It has three parts. So let's look at this first one. You're familiar with part of this one right here. This is unbelievable. All right. So what's our root word here? We saw it before. There we go. Our root word is believe. We had to drop the silent E at the end so that we can pronounce this correctly, but that's still our root word is believe. Our prefix, 
is on. On means not or opposite. And then our suffix is a bowl. So that can be a is or can be or also like the word able. So we are not, not able to believe it. If it's unbelievable, we are not able to believe it. That helps us figure out the meaning of that word by taking it into pieces. All right, let's look at unhappily. What's our root word first? Hmm. I'm going to circle this guy right here. What do you notice about that? Did you notice that happy is supposed to be spelled H-A-P-P-Y? So this is another one where you had to change the root word spelling a little bit to make it fit with the suffix at the end. So we change that H-A-P-P-Y, we change the Y to an I, and then we can add our suffix at the end. You'll also see that where we have to take and change the Y to an I in order to be able to add ES to the end of some words also. All right, our prefix is on again. This time our suffix is li, so how something is. So if it is unhappily, so something is being in a way that is happy. Uh-oh, except we have this un in front, so it's in a way that's not happy. So if I am speaking unhappily to my class, I'm speaking in a way that is not happy, in a way that is not happy. But I'm not going to speak to you that way, okay? All right, disagreeable. Let's look for the root word. There we go, agree. Hmm, that one's not too bad. That one spelled correctly. It's a regular word. I didn't have to make any changes. All right, so let's look for a prefix. Dis, all right, so this time dis means not or opposite. Oh, just like on. It's going to be similar. Then at the end, we have our suffix a bull. So disagreeable. So that means that we are not able to agree. If someone is disagreeable, they are not able to agree. All right. How about distrustful? You see your root word there? Yes, you do. Trust. That's one we didn't have to change. We didn't have to fool with it. Trust is just the root word. Our prefix is dis again. This time our suffix is full. So if we are distrustful of someone, that means we are not full of trust for them. So we are not full of trust. All right, guys. So that is our affixes lesson. We learned about prefixes and some of their meanings of some of the prefixes you might come across. We learned about suffixes and the meaning of some suffixes. We looked at words and found the prefix and suffix on some root words. Now your job this week is going to be in your reading. Look for some words that have prefixes or suffixes. And even better, if you can find some words that have prefixes and suffixes on the same word, that'd be amazing. So jot down any words that you find that have prefixes, prefixes or suffixes and see if you can figure out what they mean by decoding the meaning of the prefixes and the suffixes. I look forward to seeing that. Have a great week.